I spent uh, a few days each summer in the 60s and 70s at the building, at 1009 Fifth Avenue. And I've just grown to, to love the facade and also the interiors. I just, uh, I've always loved buildings since I was a kid. But these were on such a huge scale, I, I just couldn't believe it. I did notice though that the roof, the copper roofing was becoming severely pitted and dented and actually had holes in it. I was worried about its, its future, as were Dr. and Mrs. Siemens. That's when it came down to a sort of a family decision to, to do work on it and, and a decision had to be made whether to um, do a, a thorough job of actually uh, restoration or basically something to just patch the building up to waterproof it until the next patch job. That's when I consulted an architect, North Carolina architect named Gerald Allen. One of the people he introduced me to was the grandson of the metal worker who did the contracting on all the metal work of the original building in 1901. We met and started planning for a serious restoration of the exterior rather than just a, a patchwork piecemeal job. Well, that first effort under Mr. Allen's direction was, I really didn't know what we were getting into. We had this scaffolding and we had all of these loose pieces of sculpted copper on the roof. Molds had to be made of the pieces. In a sense, they had to retool the small factory which remained in New York, the Fibiger factory. They had to retool the shop in order to make new pieces for the roof. There was a suggestion the copper's composition be instead fiberglass. And I never saw the argument for using a product which is modern in place of a product which wears so beautifully um, over time. We went ahead with uh, copper, but at a thickness that would stand maybe another 50 to 100 years uh, more than the original 80 years it had already endured. It was just a major undertaking. And then after that got underway, I just, we really hadn't completely considered the paint removal issue. I was really concerned about removing detail from the limestone and the brickwork with the methods that were commonly used at that period, which was still sandblast. Although I had seen that some of the more prominent buildings in New York were using other methods, mostly chemical removal. There we were with scaffolding all covering the building in order to uh, work on the roof. Uh, I just didn't see any reason why we shouldn't go the full nine yards and uh, tackle the uh, facade as well. And that was another you know, economic decision we had to make, difficult, but um, it made sense to do both at once. And so we had uh, a gentleman named Strauss take on that job of removing the paint chemically from the building. The sixth and seventh floor were difficult, a challenge, let me put it that way. In order to not interfere with the beauty of those two mansard roofs, as well as conform to the landmarks regulations of not having uh, your one's changes visible from street level, we had to sink a new floor with a slanted roof onto the roof between the mansards. One atrium used to be storage. It was leaking heavily and it was old furniture, broken glass. The other one was a machine room for central air conditioning for one of the subdivided apartments during the 60s and 70s. 
Mr. Iverson, who was on site as Mrs. Siemens representative, opened those rooms up and joined them with the glass roof and atrium, now the seventh floor. The sixth floor, not connected except by fire stair to the seventh floor, was a group of very, very small rooms which had originally been servants' quarters. And in order to make that habitable for today's modern client group, we took down the walls and let as much light in as possible. Mr. Iverson designed a, a beautiful aluminum and cypress floor. It's become a really beautiful apartment. In a sense, those two floors are modern. Now they are very beautiful and they could be sculpted by any new owner now. There was a big move in the city to tear down the structures which seemed to represent the city. Some of it was just interior demolition, but much of it was complete demolition of buildings. So everywhere you drove or walk or when you come out of the subway, you'd see another building had vanished. The fact that we were so close to having ours being demolished even without our consent, that I believe that that's what led the family to make its firm commitment to do this uh, restoration correctly. <laughs>